Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Even Stevens Ranked Podcast, the podcast for all things Even Stevens. I'm Brittany Butler. I'm Ethan Brim. And today we are talking about Season 1, Episode 17, Get a Job. Get a Job. You better get a job, Lewis. <laughs> this is a very creative title. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> I didn't even think about it. This episode was directed by Jonathan Winfrey, who so far on our journey here has directed Lewis in the middle. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Winfrey is Oprah's son. Uh, Yeah, fun fact. (laughs) Yeah, and he directs a few other episodes in the future. Yeah. And it was written by Sarah Cunningham and Susie Valandry. Now Susie Freeman. Oh, you really? Yeah. Mm, Yeah, I think that's her married name. It has a 7.4 on IMDb, which is like a hair below most. It was 116 in production. I have this ranked at number 38. I have it at 47. Yeah. Which I think is pretty accurate. Yeah. My guess, I first said 41, and then I said 30, but meaning within the 30s. Yeah. 38. It's close to 41, and it's in the 30s. I I had a feeling it was going to be in the 40s for me. There were a couple that you and I have, like, the same number, and we haven't... I thought we would have gotten to them by now. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I think Strictly Ballroom might be Maybe, yeah. We have a couple that are like the same exact number, which is weird. Yeah. Before we get into it, I have an email I want to read. So this email is from Polly. So he sent this a little while ago, and it was before Honey Boy came out where he's at. And so he said, hey guys, in preparation for Honey Boy, I've been revisiting Even Stevens for the first time in nearly two decades to get fully immersed in the Shireverse. I have to say that your ranked list has come in handy, so I'm assuming he means mine. Mm -hmm. I made a habit of referring to the list to see how well an episode holds up, and it's a very accurate ranking. (laughs) Why, thank you. Uh, Anyways, I was wondering when you'll cover the Even Stevens movie. I'm interested in your take on it. It must be a massive undertaking to meticulously comb through, though. Also, that's how I discovered your site a while back, was through your Shia reaction compilation video. Yeah. I put the, just, you know, in a pinned comment like by the way (laughs) here's all this stuff they continue so in conclusion thanks for your dedication to this low-key show your passion is hard to ignore lol because yeah it's genuinely a unique series and i've tried sharing it with some buddies as well parentheses band on the roof got positive feedback go figure ha 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 your efforts are appreciated cool it's gonna be a couple years for the movie I know, I was like, oh my god, yeah, it's like, well, you can expect it when we're done with the series, whenever that is. Um, I mean, I still may or may not decide to do, like, my own video review of it. Okay. Like, a really, like, short one, try not to keep it too long. For the YouTubes? Yeah, for YouTube, and then... I also was a guest on the D Comedy podcast recently, and they had me on to talk about the movie. So yeah, that's right. that exists if you want to check that out, I guess. Although me and Ethan, I know we have different opinions on the movie, but I honestly don't even think I was that harsh on it on that podcast. So, yeah. But yeah, and then they also said that they are hoping for us to do a Honey Boy episode. But I was like, now I don't even know if we could do that because it's like we're trying to stay so on schedule with everything else and like. Mm -hmm. like special episodes just like throw us off well i think we'd have to wait a little bit because we just had our trailer yeah review like a couple months ago so i think Mm -hmm. i would if we did do it i think i'd want to do it in the future oh like a ways in the future almost like a like a retrospective yeah like watching it again maybe like a one-year anniversary or something yeah when it's already on prime yeah but yeah, so thank you, Polly, for sending that. We appreciate it. And of course, anyone else listening, feel free to send us uh, an email at evenstevensranked at gmail.com or uh, leave us a voicemail in the form of calling the phone number we have or sending us a voice recording, voice memo. Uh, either way works. So getting back into it, the Disney Plus synopsis for the episode is Lewis Desperate for the money he needs to buy a used Slurpee machine, reluctantly takes a job as a dog sitter. He gets along fabulously with the critters under his care. Still, Lewis being Lewis and dogs being dogs, chaos ensues. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Of course. I think it's funny because he didn't reluctantly take the job as a dog sitter. It was his idea. Yeah. He reluctantly took a 
job. It took a job, period. Yeah. 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 What is the IMDb? Oh, God. Was IMDb a good one or no? Eh, no, it wasn't it. really that Nothing special. Good. So, but yeah, I th- just thought that was funny. Lewis being Lewis and dogs being dogs, dogs. being dogs, as you know. <laughs> dogs are crazy. Just, just a wonderful description. Like, who came up with that one? Well, yeah. Well, I think those things will happen if you have fifteen dogs in your home. So that synopsis pretty much ignored the subplot, which I love the subplot. So, mm. um, my little tiny summary thing says. In order to afford a sludgy, a.k.a. slushy, machine for his room, Lewis opens his own doggy daycare, but like most things Lewis attempts, it quickly becomes difficult for him to handle. Meanwhile, Steve and Donnie bond over destroying a birdhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Building and then destroying. Yep. The sludgy kind of aspect to it is, you re- I think that's the most important thing, because it's all about Lewis scheming to get this thing. And Yeah. They don't call it sludgy anywhere, do they? Oh, probably somewhere, but because I've never heard that before. I've heard slushy. slushy. I've heard slurpy. I've heard slush puppy. Icy. Icy. Yeah. But I've never heard sludgy. That sounds yeah. gross. That sounds like sludge that like comes out of a car or yeah. like something yeah, like... like all brown, rusty goop. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Because I was like, what were like slushy, slurpy, all that stuff copywritten? Probably. I think slurpy is. Well, slurpy yeah. has got to be. Icy is. Slushy yeah. might not be, but they just I, I don't think you could look it up as easily back then, so they probably just made up their own word. Uh, general thoughts? In my written notes, I said, maybe it was just because it was 11 p.m. and I was tired and taking notes while watching, but I kind of felt myself zoning out. I was really tired, though. Yeah, this episode to do that. Yeah. I said, I still like a lot of things about it, and I wasn't surprised by my ranking when I checked, um, and I'm fine with it. In my original review from 2017, I said that it, quote, went by lightning fast, mainly due to the montages. But then I also pointed out in my review that I was not a fan of the fact that there were so many montages. That's what I also one. said, too. Because there are, like, three. No, there's more than that. There's, like, really small ones, Oh, too. yeah, like, mini ones, just, like, when he has the jobs and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true, too, yeah. Yeah, I think one of the reasons why... It's weird. I think it went by lightning fast for some reason for me in 2017 because of the montages, but now it crawled a little bit because of the montages because yeah. with the montages, like nothing's really, there's no dialogue. Like yeah. you're just watching things happen. There's like some quirky music playing or something. Towards the end, well not towards, yeah, towards the end when all the dogs are getting crazy. Like that one goes mm-hmm. on for like nine minutes or something. Yeah. Minutes, but, like it feels like, it. well, it's like yep. nothing gets, it's not like something gets accomplished. Other time there are montages and there's like stories being developed, but this one's just yeah. chaos for two minutes. And it's like, yeah, we don't need this. No. <laughs> I, I remember when I did my ranking the first time when I watched this episode, I remember the only thing that I could take away besides like how f- I thought it was pretty funny, but I, the only thing I took away was how many montages there are and I'm like this is way too many montages that's like the only thing I could think of but then I said Steve and Donnie are fun because I think both of them are underrated yes and then the plot basically revolves around Lewis finding a way Mm -hmm. so in that respect can't really go wrong because that's such a a hallmark of Lewis Stevens (laughs) yeah it's a common theme yeah to me Lewis is at his best when he's scheming and like Mm -hmm. obviously I love that this opening scene that we're going to talk about um, I just yeah. love how he just kind of manipulates the situation in a way mm-hmm. that he thinks it'll work for him. I love yeah. when he does stuff like that, personally. Um, this episode is not bad. It's more of one of those that I think you forget about because it's just nothing. I think you remember maybe the scheme. Yeah, and there are like certain elements, too, that a lot of people remember. Yeah, I remember, like, to me, when I think of this one, I think of the scheme you know what i mean i think yeah. of the sludgy machine and then churro machine and the churro machine yeah. uh like i think of that like that's to me the most memorable aspect how he gets there i think could have i mean it's a good premise though i mean him getting a job like yeah. learning responsibility mm-hmm. it's a basic trope of sitcoms for kids but yeah. yeah i don't i don't fault it for anything i don't fault you for that who could fault you yeah <laughs> besides the montages besides the montages i can't really fault it for anything i don't think God, I love that quote. Which one's that from? Allison. I know you find me irresistible, all right? And I don't fault you for that. Who could fault you? That's right. Boy in a rock. So do you have anything else? I mean, not really. That It's pretty cut and dried, I think, for me. 
it's a good episode. I think I don't think it's a bad episode. I don't no. think of when I think of this episode, I don't say, ah, oh, man, get a job. Like, I don't want to watch that. I think, oh, yeah, this is a good one. Like, mm-hmm. there's some really cool moments, I think, in it. But yeah, I think it's ultimately it is very slow when you're talking about just narrative and pacing. Like, it just doesn't have mm-hmm. a ton of quickness to it. Yeah. And it definitely feels a little empty at times because of the montages, like, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, definitely. All right. So, plot point time. So, this one opens with Steve driving home from work at night, or I'm assuming work. Um, <laughs> and it's like a fast motion thing of him driving. He gets home, goes through the door, and it's apparently Father's Day in the Stevens home and nowhere else because it's not Father's Day. <laughs> I love this. Lewis pops up out of nowhere with confetti. Happy Father's Day. I read on TV.com that the confetti is apparently CGI. Really? Yeah, and I never noticed. I'd have to watch it again with that in mind. Because I always watched it on our low-quality files, but then when I looked it up on Disney+, Plus, You can tell. Like, when Lewis shoots the confetti, it looks natural, but then when it cuts to Steve, it just looks like like, like an overwhelming amount of CGI confetti. Man, that's funny. I wonder why. Like, I think there's regular confetti mixed in with it, but it's just, like, a heck of a lot. There wasn't enough confetti. They're like, we need more confetti. Just add it in post. So, yeah, Lewis is wearing an I Heart Dad shirt, which I love because that's a theme throughout this episode. His I Heart shirts uh, change depending on what he's into at the moment. So, yeah, so he's wearing an I Heart Dad shirt and he's saying, like, Happy Father's Day. Every day's Father's Day, Dad, when you have the perfect dad, Dad. And, you know, Daddy, Papa. (laughs) And obviously he wants something. Yes. I love how Steve doesn't even bother asking because he's like, Lewis is going to get there eventually. I'm just going to ride the wave yeah and I, I like the way Tom Virtue is acting here like yeah. he's sort of like he, you can tell he's like humoring him but at the same time like yeah. still acting interested yeah, yeah I liked it yeah I did too but I, yeah I love that Lou today's not Father's Day <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's interesting I always get this scene in my head I always think of when Lewis asks Steve for the drum set. Yeah, and he pops up in, in front, front of the, the newspaper. newspaper. I do too. I was expecting the newspaper and I was like, oh, that's a different episode. Yep. I always get those confused. Me too. Because it's very similar. Yeah. I love it because I always make that connection. And then in the very next scene, it's Steve bringing Lewis down to the basement and showing him all of his yeah. used stuff. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, look at this churro machine and whatever. And I'm like, oh my God, they called right back directly yeah. to get a job. That's a cool, that's like my, that, I like that scene a lot when they talk about all the stuff that he has wanted, the suit of armor. Yep. They made that connection too of like, yeah. this is a very similar <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So basically Lewis just flat out asks uh, Steve or at least says that he really wants uh, a sludgy machine. Now, I dare you to admit that's not the best sludgy you've ever tasted. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. It's amazing. It's a perfect blend of velvety crushed ice particles and chemically enhanced cherry flavors. Lewis, just get to the part where I say no. You know Ronnie's Mini Mart down on 4th Street? The one with the big uh, sludgy machine? Yeah. Yeah, well, it got closed down the other day. Oh, that's awful. It's terrible. That sludgy machine shouldn't be sitting in some junkyard rusting away. It should be in my room, providing me with satisfying icy beverages around the clock. So you want to buy a sludgy machine? Want? No. Need. No, no, see, that's the thing. He did the thing that I mentioned before. I wrote it in my notes. Now, how recently we were talking about, I think it was in the Hanukkah episode, like when he said, anyone up for the chicken dance? And they said, what? And then it's the, the chick, yeah, let, let's just go or yeah. whatever. Like he did it here where he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah. it's pretty good. Pretty pretty good like you know what i mean i love when he does that yeah like that added stutter that he does just starting to say a word and stopping and it's really yeah yeah, it's effective i used to add those stutters to my talk when i was a kid like just (laughs) watching the show i was like subconscious i wasn't even doing it on purpose i would just add it yeah yeah and now i do that all the time too over the last decade of just watching the show all the time it's just it's just part of me now like i just do that stuff you know, if I'm like saying something funny or something, I'll throw like a Lewis flair to whatever it is I'm saying. Yeah. Or... So basically, Lewis tells Steve this story about how there's this shop that's closing down and they used to have a sludgy machine and it's just going to be wasting away in a junkyard if Lewis doesn't snatch it up. Otherwise, it'll go to some kid, some bad kid. <laughs> All right. And then Steve is just like, you know what, Lewis, I got a story for you. 
And he tells the story of Mr. Hoppy, Steve's pogo stick that he worked so hard for as a kid, and it felt so great to buy it with his own hard-earned dollars. And does this whole story, and then I do love that too. So, Lou, what did you learn from my Mr. Hoppy story? Uh, you know, I, I, you lost me somewhere in the middle. Where did we land on the sludgy thing? <laughs> oh my God, I love it. Yeah, it's good. This whole opening scene is really good. Yeah. And so, and then Steve basically st- does a title drop and just says, Lewis, get a job. <laughs> and he's like, a job? He's like, how am I going to get a job? He's like, well, Ren's giving out jobs, doing a thing. I'm like, well, of course she is. It's so ridiculous. Of course she's running a teen career planning center from her bedroom. Yeah, this is so ridiculous. First of all... <laughs> <laughs> I love the way every time we talk about stuff, it always starts with a first of all from you. <laughs> first of all... This is, do you know how hard it is to get an actual job as like a 12 or 13 or 14 year old? Oh yeah. Like I tried to get a job. Like the only jobs you can get are like at a, like a summer camp. Yeah. And you don't even get paid or like I have a paper route. So yeah, you can do that, I guess. But yeah, because people don't want to employ kids. these kids because there's so there's liabilities for there to be an outlet to find 13 year olds jobs. It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> I know. And Ren's a teen herself. How is she counseling the, the you know? Oh it's, so, it's, it's like so she crazy. has so many, like this has to be a job for her. Like who's employing her to be the volunteer counselor? Yeah. Well, apparently all these jobs are reporting back to her with complaints because she's getting all the complaints. Right. So something fun about this scene as well. So like all the kids that are waiting. Yeah, it's cool. She calls the kids by name and yeah. all of the names are names of writers on the show. Yeah. Which is so fun. So first it's Dearborn and then it's Cunningham, Cunningham. who's one of the writers, Sarah Cunningham. And then she says Kaiser, who's Brooke Kaiser, who wrote uh, an episode or two. Mm -hmm. That's just so funny. I just love it. You might as well. I mean, if you're looking for names. It's like no one else is going to pay attention to the names of the crew and and stuff like that. Like the average person isn't paying close attention to the opening credits. Like, you know. Yeah, exactly. I think it's cute. And she says something here that always stuck with me when she says Cunningham, I think. She goes, candy counter, multiplex. Me too. I I always think of this, yeah. Oh, like here's a tip. More salt on the popcorn, they'll buy more drinks. I'm like, oh my God, that always stuck with me. No, me too. I always think about it. And first of all, I'm like, why should this person care if they buy more drinks? They're not getting a cut of it. They're not getting commission at the movie theaters for drinks. But I always think of it every time I go, I wonder if they do that to my popcorn at movies. But I mean, now you can kind of put everything on yourself. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so, a lot of places you can. But do like it. back in the day, like when they put used to put the butter on for yeah. you and like would do everything. The salt. I was always thinking of it. Yeah, I also remember she hires one guy out as like a kitty photographer or something, and she says, "Don't forget the clown nose." But why does she have the clown nose? Right. She's just providing everything like, for them. She's not the employer. I know. It's just so bizarre. Like why they're like, here, here's the clown nose for whoever you hire. <laughs> Make sure to give it to them. Like she just has clown noses. The best part too is that none of these kids say a single word. I know. <laughs> I don't know why. That's just so funny. It's so weird. It's just so funny because like Ren is saying all this stuff to them and they yeah. just take the information and smile, smile and, and nod mind. and walk away. Yeah. Lewis comes running into her room and he says that he needs a teen job thingy, which is great. So he sits down and Ren interviews him and I just, I love this whole thing. I'm going to put in a clip because it's just too good. Now, what is your career goal? I want to be one of those guys that rides a motorcycle in in the Globe of Doom at that Vegas show. I knew that actually. Okay, where do you see yourself in five years? I'm hoping to move to Donnie's room. And which famous figure do you most respect? Um, oh, you know that guy at the donut store with that claw hand who picks those donuts up out right out of that grease like it's magic? Okay, donut guy. It's not multiple choice either. This is like back in the day when people were like still trying to figure out the internet and how it works. And they're like, just type in anything, blank things, and like you'll get results. And like the results come up instantly of what kind of job he needs. I assumed she was like looking in like a database that they gave her. And like limiting it down? Yeah, like keyword searches or... Maybe. Yeah, like automatic surveys. You like type it in and it like generates Maybe. some sort of ideas for you. Yeah. It just can't be that many options. No. Oh God, but it's just so funny. I it's love that. It's a great that, scene. You know? No, it's a great scene. I love it. I wanted to drive one of those motorcycles in the Globe of Doom in that Vegas show. And she's like, I, I knew, knew that, that actually. actually. 
Where do you see yourself in five years? Hoping to move to Donnie's room. <laughs> five years. It's just so good. Yeah. Because he's still be in like high school probably or like graduating high school. Yeah. And then, he doesn't think actual aspirations. He's just like, yeah, yeah I want to move to Donnie's room. <laughs> Sets his sights low, you know? Yeah. What famous figure do you most respect? <laughs> I love this one. A guy with the claw hand. At the donut store who just picks those donuts up right out of the grease like it's magic. She's like. I love it. Right. Donut guy. <laughs> this should be interesting. <laughs> and then, you know, she does it. And then how do you feel about mass mail marketing? Giving it a title that it's not. Literally. And so he's just licking envelopes and we see the dreaded CGI tongue. I like it. That they use not once but twice in the series. And I hate it so much. It's awful. I like it. It's awful. It's pretty good. It's awful. All the mail looks the exact same. Like, I wonder what he's shipping out. I know. They all look like those small packages. Those, like, manila envelopes. I don't know. Mm. I hate that CGI tongue. It just dangles there. It looks so bad. I'm just like, whose idea? Like, anytime they throw, like, surreal stuff like that, CGI edited to just look... It's, like, not realistic. Like, it doesn't look realistic, yeah. I mean, I get it, but at the same time, it just feels like a cheap laugh. It's like... Yeah, it's slapstick. Like, let's, like, you know, put this thing... I'm just like, ugh, just looks so gross. I think it's more about, like, conveying something that you can have to do in a limited amount of time, like... They're trying to show that his tongue hurts, you know, and just yeah. Instead of him doing it and being like, "Ouch, my tongue hurts," like they just make the CGI it's like. But I mean, they also could have given him another job that didn't involve a yeah. CGI tongue. <laughs> yes, never yet. Yeah, they gave him two other ones. Yeah, it's never been funny to me. Like even as a kid, it was just. Never... I think I just never saw it as being funny. I just saw it as like just building this tone. It's like tone building. Yeah, I don't know. I just. There's just something about it. Every time I see it, I just kind of cringe. Really? I'm like, eh. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway. So basically, so yeah, Lewis fails at, quote, mass mail marketing because he only has so much spit. And which also, it's like, you can do it other ways. You can just use some water. Yeah, they have like those things that you, it's like a sponge thing. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Or like literally, I just mailed a letter the other day and I just took a little dab of water on my pinky and did it that way. Yeah. So he comes back and he's like, yeah, no, I'll do anything as long as it doesn't involve licking. So then Ren goes licking again. And then she's like, oh, here's something. Oh, wait, but that involves some light licking. I'm like, light licking. what the hell jobs does she have in this database? They're all involving licking. Well, he did mention donuts and motorcycles. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like the way they say that I'm like what are you alluding to like what is the joke like what <laughs> some light licking uh, yeah there's something there I think <laughs> I'm just like what the heck that's bizarre like what job descriptions will say requires light licking <laughs> other than mailing envelopes yeah yeah it's just the joke I'm just like, oh my God. Like, yeah. it doesn't even matter. It's just funny. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it's a good joke. I like it. Yeah, so then she says, how do you feel about journalism? This is the biggest stretch ever, by the way. <laughs> so journalism is just Lewis being a paper boy. Yeah, which is has nothing to do with journalism. It's actually sales, I think, more. He's delivering the journalism stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like he has nothing to do with the actual journalism. Like you think that he's going to be going off and like doing a report, yeah. doing some, you know, investigating about something. Yeah, who's going to hire a 13 year old to do that though? Yeah, I know. And then he's just riding his bike and throwing the papers and hitting people. And, and old guys chasing him down the street. And so he comes back and she's like, oh, that is the most complaints I've ever gotten. You're right. I'm like, what? Why are all the complaints being filed to Ren? She's like a 14 year old job hunter. Her own personal phone line is just ringing off the hook of people saying, hello, 14-year-old person who's giving out jobs. <laughs> oh, man. I love the way she tries to, like, convert her room into an office. Yeah. She has, like, a little waiting room. She has, like, those chairs. Yeah. It's so over the top. She has the little laptop. Her desk is, like, moved to a different direction. Oh, my God. It's so much. <laughs> So she gives him a third job, and I like the way she goes, okay, even a total numbskull could do this job. I'm your man. I love it. 
Then this one is him to be a mascot, a pig mascot for a bacon restaurant. If someone loves bacon. I know, we're already starting with the bacon. And actually, yeah, in Luscious Lou, too, he was um, eating bacon. Yeah, well, I wish it was the bacon barn or whatever that place is called. The bacon shack. Bacon shack, yeah. Yeah, but this is another one. It's called Bacon Burgorama. And some kid comes up to Lewis, yanks his tail, and he goes chasing him. And Lord knows what he did. Beat him up or something. I don't know. <laughs> Let your imagination fly. <laughs> Three strikes, so he's dead to run now. <laughs> like, honestly, she's just like, yeah, that's it. You made a kid cry. Well, he made me cry first. Oh, yeah, totally random, but I meant to say, this episode is on my list. It's ranked only one higher than Luscious Lou, which was the last one we talked about. Oh, that's weird. A few episodes ago, I had two in a row like that, too. Like, Luscious Lou is 39, and now this is 38. Yeah. So he's like, Ren, if you don't help me, I'm never going to get my sludgy machine. And then I feel like that was on commercials. And then the, well, let me put it to you this way. Close the door. Yeah. I feel like they used that. Probably. Uh, it's also similar to the, can I ask you something? You just did. Bye. Yeah. That sort of thing. <laughs> Sign with the dirtiest face. Also, uh, Lewis is wearing the same Hawaiian shirt as Swap.com hanging on the door here. Yeah. The blue with the cars on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that one. Yep, he's wearing it there, and then at the next scene with the dog. Yeah, that's the one I had when I was a kid. I have no idea where it is now. No, yeah, it's the same one. One of the same ones I have too. Yeah, I'm just like racking up shirts from like memorable episodes. Yeah, man, that'd be cool. That'd be cool to have one one he wears in like every like every Hawaiian shirt he wears, or like one from every episode or something. Oh yeah, like right now I'm just starting like memorable ones. Yeah, yeah. It's like Swap.com, Scrub Day, the musical, and the movie. That's so cool. And what I have so far. So Lewis goes to this park and like a go- it's a golden retriever, right? Yeah. That comes up to him. So yeah, he's on like that. Um, mer- what's that thing called? The one that like one the, that just spins around. Um, no, there's any other t- uh, not tilt a whirl. I want to say, but no, not tilt those- a no. whirl. I wouldn't know it's like that though. Like, what do they call that thing? It's like a merry-go-round, but it's yeah. not. It's like a yeah, but he's just on that thing. He's sitting there going around, and this dog comes up to him. I also love this quote where he goes, I'm just not one of those job people you hear so much about, you know? I like that, yeah. <laughs> These job people. <laughs> you hear so funny. much about. You hear hey, you're so one of those job about. people, aren't you? <laughs> yep. Got one. Lewis gets the idea. He's just like, you know what? You're a very nice pooch. I could hang out with you all day. And then the, the gears start churning. Yeah. I should hang out with you all day. That's what I should do. You're my ticket to Sludgeville, princess. That's it. Gets the idea to start Lewis's doggy daycare. And then it cuts to a montage of, like a short, very short montage of Lewis uh, putting up flyers for the doggy daycare suddenly. It's the same day, mind you. Yeah. He's wearing the same shirt. And he has a picture with a dog. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Like just, he has that already on deck. (laughs) Yeah. It's <laughs> oh, like I oh, I know what I'll use for the poster a picture of me with the dog. It's a picture of him hugging a dog. The dog is smiling as well, by the way, which is just yeah. funny. And Lewis is wearing a shirt that says "I heart dogs." And it's not the same dog from the park. It's like a German Shepherd or something. Yes, it's just a, it's like when did he do this photo shoot? When did he get the shirt that says "I heart dogs"? Yeah, those take time to make. You can't just like crank those things out like you have to like order especially them. in 2000 you have to order them and then you have to like pay a lot if you're only getting one shirt he has a lot of custom shirts and he has the i heart dad or whatever yep and then he has this one and then he has the true one like obviously i know it's a show it's just stupid for the heck of it yeah i know but it's funny to think about it i just laughed like as soon as i thought about that i was like wait a minute I'm like this is the same day where did he get this picture with the dog and the shirt and the yeah. flyers printed i love that you by the way you just said it's not even that dog it's a freaking like german shepherd <laughs> yeah like they didn't even try to make it like the same dog <laughs> he just has all these dogs at his disposal to pose with yeah Whose poor dog did Lewis snatch up to take this selfie with? <laughs> also, what happened to Princess? I know. She's just running amok in the park somewhere. When he puts the flyer up on the tree, he's like genuinely laughing. Like you can tell it's Shia. Like, he's just laughing at the fact that he had to pose with this dog. I love it. I'm just like the fact that Shia posed for that picture is iconic. It's really good. <laughs> Like, someone like that needs to be a poster. I love his, like, cheesy look, too. You know what I mean? Where he's just got that cheesy smile. It's the no-teeth dopey smile. Yeah, like that, yeah, the no-teeth. Like, the eyes get closed. Yeah. 
the mouth goes up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Love great. it. And of course, so this is another poster with a phone number on it that was also blurred out on Disney Plus. Yeah, weird. Mm-hmm. It was a five 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 number too. It's not like Matt Dearborn's personal contact info. <laughs> I know, my God. No, but I love the posters because Lewis's doggy daycare is written in a font very similar to Comic Sans. Yeah, and it's just wonderful. <laughs> what is it? Three two something? Are you you have Disney Plus? Yeah, uh, no, I have the file still. What is it? Three. Through. What is it? Three. Uh, what? Three two four two. Yeah, You're gonna call it? No, I was seeing if it spelled dogs, but it's dogs would be three. Six four seven. Call five 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 dogs. <laughs> yeah, two of the numbers are right. I know. I'm curious. I I would call these numbers, but I'm too. Well, nervous. five 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 is fake, though. No, someone said on the on the Lewis's homemade jungle traps they called it, and it was like the number for like some bell tower. Five five five. Yeah. Well, call it right now. Let's do it. Oh my god. Put are we really gonna do speaker? this? Yeah, do it. Well, the area code's different. Should we do the Sacramento area code? Okay, what's the Sacramento area code? Um LA is three two three. I don't know what Sacramento is. Nine one six. Nine one six. All right, so here we go. I'm so scared. I, I feel way more confident doing this with you though. I would never yeah. do this on my own. <laughs> oh yeah. I use I've done it. <laughs> okay. Nine one six five five five. See, this is why they blur the number. They don't want people doing this. <laughs> Little do they know. <laughs> Three, two, four, two. Well, they shouldn't have made it visible to begin with. Yeah. All right, so here we go. I'm calling, putting it on speaker. The number you have dialed is not in service. Okay. Please check the number and dial again. Good thing they blurred or it. Or dial 611 for customer assistance. You, you know, you dial, yeah, you dial 611. Yeah, I'm trying to get a hold of 555 Whatever. Like, I don't understand it. Why do they need to blur that then? To not, so we don't waste our time dialing it. And let me try it with 617. Is that you? you? My no. area code. Yeah. Here we go again. You better keep this in um, in the podcast. The number you have dialed is not in Another service. Another one. Please not in service. Right, do 323. Do 323. Okay. 323. We're sorry. All circuits are busy now. Please try your call again oh, later. Yeah, that's something. Message FL1. Huh. Maybe it is something that has a high call volume. Maybe. Or maybe it's some area code in the country. It's like an active number. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because not necessarily, maybe not the Sacramento or the Boston one, but maybe like right. someone has that number or something. But weird, right. 555 used to be automatically fake. They were they didn't assign that to anybody. Uh-huh. They must have ran out of numbers and had to add 555s or something. Because, wait, I want to call 555 Trapper Inn. Oh, yeah. So let's see what happens. I'm calling 555 Trapper Inn. Where is the location? I don't know. 555. Weird. So let's see. Your call can be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. Or dial 611 for customer assistance. It, that's it. Um, Why did they need to blur this stuff? I. I don't understand. Well, that was a fun exercise. Yeah, well, you, should, you have to at least include, like, a couple of them. Oh, yeah. Our listeners are dying to know. So, this little... And this is where I got the music for our tweet segment as well. Yeah, is yeah. this montage where he's putting up the flyers. So then it cuts to Ren opening their house door, and this woman named Mrs. Walters is at the door. She's like, I'm here to drop off my little poopsie. I love this lady so much. She's good. She's in a lot of stuff. She's in everything, yeah. She was in Girl Meets World. She was in Lizzie McGuire. She was the photographer in the Picture Day episode. Oh, snap, yeah. I totally remember that episode. I love her because she goes to Gordo like he was trying to do like that like super hard face that like Ethan Kraft was telling him to do. And she's like, your mother's going to see this. Smile. That is not a smile. Smile. (laughs) Dude, that's so weird. I haven't seen that episode in probably like 15, 20 years, and I totally remember that just by your impression. Yeah, so this lady drops off her little poopsie, and Lewis goes running over to her. Oh, you must be Mrs. Walters, and this must be poopsie. Hello, what a pretty little girl. Oh, and then a poopsie is a boy. (laughs) Oh, yes, and her bow is very 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 manly. manly. Oh, and then she says, she says, I'll see you later, precious, or something. Yes, yes, yes. What does he say? He says, thank you. Bye-bye, my precious. Oh, then please call me Lewis. That's right. Please call me Lewis. It'll be better. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ren breaks. It's great. Yeah, so then Ren's like, so this is your job, babysitting this pooch? And he's like, uh-huh, no. All these pooches. 
And there's like freaking 25 dogs in their living room. Yeah, and the number drastically goes down throughout the episode. Because I think when he takes them for a walk... He loses them. Unless That's he just what does happens. like six at a time. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. Also, did you notice they do this weird thing in this episode with like brightening the exposure? For which scene? Like when they zoom in on things, it'll be like zoom, 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 zoom. And it'll be like really bright flash, like really bright really? flash. Like, oh, I gotta watch it again. Like when they show all the dogs, it's cutting to all the different dogs Maybe. to make it seem like so crazy. It's just like bright flash. Flash, bright flash, like blah, 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 dogs, dogs, dogs. Really? They do it with Donnie at the end as well. Oh, okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like when Donnie's like watching the game or whatever, it's yeah. just like, shoo, 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 like all the different like shots of him. It's just like yeah. really bright flashes. I know, what you're, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I just noticed it and I was like, they do it twice. I'm like, I wonder if that's like. It's probably a DP thing or a director thing. Yeah, like, if that's, like, something they liked to do, mm-hmm. <laughs> specifically. Yeah. Lewis's plan is, obviously, it's a get-rich-quick thing, and it's pretty smart, you know, common sense. He says, uh, hello, like, the more dogs I take care of, the more money I make, the quicker I make that money, and the quicker I get my sludgy machine. Mm-hmm. So, bam, there you go. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you can't even lick an envelope. <laughs> mm-hmm. How are you going to do this? He's like, with love, discipline, and a love pocket discipline. full of cocktail weenies. Huh. The second episode in a row that we hear the word weenie. That is true. Yeah. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the Even Stevens Rag podcast with fun facts about how many times we've heard the word weenie. (laughs) We got the hot takes here. It cuts to the subplot with Steve and Donnie down in the basement and they discover this old birdhouse called Feather Featherland. I like that name. (laughs) Yes, it's great. Uh, Which is something that uh, Donnie and Steve started setting up when Donnie was little, but they never finished. And so they decide to start working on it again together. And I think it's so funny. I love this first half of the whole ordeal where, you know, Donnie's reading the so-called manual. Okay, it looks like we take bolt M and wingnut 7 and attach slate D to side 4J. That's impossible. I'll find the problem here. Oh, I think I got it. Great, what is it? These are the operating instructions for the garage door opener. No way. Didn't you find it odd that a birdhouse would have a remote control? You're right. <laughs> Nothing. The super big instructions for a garage door opener. Like <laughs> That's what I thought, too. The size of a, like three newspapers. Tom Virtue and Nick are like so underrated. Yeah. Like in this scene, it's just so funny. Didn't you find it odd that a birdhouse would have a remote control? And then he tries it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like, what does he think it's going to do? It's not even set up yet. Yeah. This is a good scene, though, because you don't have a lot of moments with Donnie and Steve. Yeah. So that's just that one quick little thing with them. Then it cuts to an obvious, kind of annoyingly so, reference to dogs playing poker. I love it. We're just, it's just so overt, though, that I'm like, okay. Love it. That was just, like, easy. Like, oh, Lewis got a bunch of dogs. We gotta remake the dogs playing poker paintings. And he has his little visor, which I have. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he does, yeah. Yeah, yeah the same visor from After Hours. Yep. That goes by so slow as well. Like, it's just pointless, like, looking through all the dogs' cards. and Yeah. You, we just needed, like, that one image of him doing it. We didn't need, all right, what do you got? Now, what do you got? Like, give me your cards. Turn them over. Because, like, why would Lewis be that invested in getting those milk bones? Exactly. Like, winning the milk bones doesn't make any sense. He has no investment in it. He has no motive. It's just, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's silly. And then the way they have the dog's hand, like, touch his yeah. hand when he goes to take everything. I'm like, oh, my God. I like the concept of it. But, yeah, like you said, it could have probably just been, like, a real quick shot. Or, like, Ren coming in, like, at the end of it. Or, like, while it's happening, maybe. And then, you know. Yeah. I do like the part where he goes, <laughs> he goes, full house, uh, four of a kind, royal flesh. Oh, uh, pair of twos, I win again. Yeah. <laughs> I do like that, though. Yeah, because they don't know. <laughs> yeah. And so Ren comes walking in and suddenly, you know, the dogs start to get antsy. She's like, oh, the, you know, these dogs are looking a little whatever, you know, have you taken them for a W-A-L-K? <laughs> they hang on the dogs for like an un- unnecessary amount of time barking yeah, as much. well. Yeah. And I'm just like, we didn't need that. And then he just says, yeah, why would you have to remind them? Then it cuts to Lewis walking the dogs, which is the freaking one of the funniest things in this episode because I am a sucker for a good fake dummy gag. Oh, heck yeah. I love the fake dummy. 
I love when they're being dragged like on the ground. That's like one of my favorites. It's just so funny. Like yeah, it looks so ridiculous. And especially the fact that so, like Lewis is running, 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 and then he does this dramatic fall, and then they do a wide shot, and it's just a dummy now being dragged by the few dogs. Yeah. And it's funny because most of them are little dogs. Yeah. And there's no visible friction on the dummy. It's just gliding along the grass. <laughs> like if that was a person, it would be like, you know, there'd be obvious <laughs> pullback. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's so funny yeah it's really good like I gift it and then I just watch it on a loop and there's the more it loops it's just the funnier it gets yeah oh my god yeah and it was funny you had commented on my review saying like how on all that and stuff yeah they would use the, I love the, all that the dummies I said something about how like it was funnier to me here because it's supposed to be in like a real life situation. Yeah. Like it's supposed to be real. It's not supposed to be like a slapstick thing. You mean? Yeah. Like yeah. all that. It's like a sketch comedy thing to have a dummy. It's over the top. But yeah. like for this, it was just like, Nope, yeah. we're just switching to a dummy in the park. It's now. like a realistic <laughs> scenario that just gets heightened by a fake dummy. I love it. It's I love good. it. Yeah. It is better in this situation. I love when it's embraced, you know, like yeah. it is way funnier if you know it's a dummy. So after that ridiculous dog walk, Lewis is completely tuckered out. They get home. He's like, all right, lie down. I'll put in the movie or I'll put the tape in because it's a VHS. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, all right, this is Milo and Otis. It's a movie about a dog and a cat that become friends for life. And then the little bark and then, hey, it could happen. Yeah. Uh, second episode <laughs> like, in a row when he says it could happen. When someone says it could happen. Right? That is true. That's Look right. at us. We are we, we are it. pointing out the finer things right now. We are here for a reason. What would you guys do without these facts? Yes. Oh, and also, Lewis is eating that sub. Yeah, which <laughs> shows up all over the place. In the which house. shows up all over the place, yeah. Then it cuts back to Steve and Donnie working on the birdhouse. They're trying to put on shutters. And I absolutely love this, though. This was always one of my favorite lines from Steve, where uh, Donnie says... Come on, Dad, you're making me nervous hovering over me like that. I'm not hovering, I'm overseeing at a close distance. I use that all the time, you know. Oh, man. Oh, my God, I love it. Donnie and Steve, they start having this fight, and, like, it's really explosive. It's so tense. All right, careful. I'll watch it. I said be careful, Donnie! You know what, Dad, it's your fault. This is why we never finish this thing the first time, because you're always criticizing me. No. This is your fault. We didn't finish it the first time because you don't know how to work in an organized manner. You want to organize, Dad? Fine. Since this perch is broken off, how about this one, too, to make it match? Well, with that logic, one shutter down, why not keep it even? Well, why six flags? Isn't that overkill? How about five? How about four? Or three? Or two? It's, like, intense. He's, like, is reverting back to when Donnie was, like, a kid again. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I know. He's, like, a screwdriver is not a toy. In their anger, they start, like, inadvertently tearing apart the birdhouse. So, you know, Donnie's like, okay, oh, since this perch is missing, why not make it match? And then Steve, while this shutter's missing, why not make it even? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. With the face. (laughs) It's so good. And the flags. Yeah, I love when Donnie says, and what's up with six flags? I'm like, is that a nod to six flags? I know, it's like (laughs) weird. Because you automatically think of six flags. And then they realize... The entire birdhouse is overkill because it's like would fit literally 40 birds at capacity. It's like a dollhouse, essentially. Like if you have that many birds, then you I think it's an infestation technically (laughs) because (laughs) they're now running your life. Well, it is feather, feather land. It's an awesome birdhouse, though. I wish I had one like that. It's like a amusement park. Yeah. That's why they had the flags. It was supposed to be six flags for birds. It's to match their ginormous backyard. But yeah, and then it, it, they get to the tipping point when Donnie says, What's up with the vacancy sign, Dad? Birds can't read. Yeah. <laughs> What's up with that anyway? <laughs> that is literally one of my favorite lines. I it's love it so, so much. Funny. And then they just start laughing at the absurdity of it. And they're just like, yeah, what is up with that anyway, you know? And then they just slowly start breaking the birdhouse. Like, let's give them a skylight. Destroying it. Yeah, knocking holes in it. And then you know what this thing needs? Some very serious remodeling. How about a sunken living room? (laughs) Yep. And then they just go full-blown i know he's like let's get the power tools i'm like he whips out a freaking jackhammer the jackhammer is ridiculous by the way your yes. entire house would be destroyed and again like steve's acting he's like whoa yeah <laughs> and it's like how are you gonna use a jackhammer on just like this 
small, weak birdhouse. I think a chainsaw would have been better. Yeah, but we've already seen him use a chainsaw. I know, yeah. Like, yeah, with a turkey. Mm-hmm. So, gotta switch it up. Mm-hmm. So they basically start making a heck of a lot of noise, which ends up causing the dogs upstairs to run amok. And now this is like the 25-minute montage we were talking about of Lewis just running around the house. Oh my gosh, um, this montage gives me a headache. It's so... It literally, to me, it's what separates this episode from being better. Yeah. It knocks this episode down like at least 15 ranking points for me. And is it the music, the ding, 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 It's like the salsa type of thing. Yeah, it's a little salsa-like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not even like entertaining. Like the dogs are, like some, there's some points where the dogs are just sitting there like barking. Like it's not even funny. Like it's, you know... Like, there are, like, five <laughs> seconds of just intermixed of the dogs just barking. It's like, this isn't entertaining. Like, one dog eating out of the toilet bowl. Yeah, and one has, like, the toilet paper string all through the house. That one I love. It's little Poopsie. I like that one. That's, like, the best part. Poopsie, like, teepees, like, the whole house and teepees Ren's room. Like, how does he get it on the ceiling? How does he get it? Like, I just love it. When they cut back to Poopsie after the whole room is TP'd and he's just sitting in the middle of Ren's yeah. bed like this little dot buried in toilet paper. Yeah, I, I like love that it. part. So That's cute. probably the only good part. And then there's one shot where I think it might have been Poopsie too or maybe someone else, but they're like licking Louis, a bunch of microphones in Lewis's room. Yes. Why mm-hmm. does he have so many microphones? Like good quality microphones. Obviously like comedy stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like his stand up. He has like six ribbon mics. Yeah, like, it's just, I don't know, like a stand-up collection. I don't know. Isn't it weird, though? Because I, I don't remember ever seeing it. But do you see it in other episodes, though? I, I'm going to have to keep an eye out now, I think. I know, I never noticed it. Because there are some times where he stands over there. Mm-hmm. It's, like, right behind his door. During this, or after or something, it cuts back to Steve and Donnie again. They completely destroyed the birdhouse. And then they talk, like, you know, Steve's like, wow, son, for a minute there I was thinking we weren't going to make a good team. The only way they were able to bond was by taking anger out, basically, and just, like, destroying this thing. I'm like, what does that say about their relationship? Yeah, because they're perfectionists, right? Especially Steve. Yeah. They realize that it's not that important to be overly obsessed about this birdhouse. Yeah. (laughs) So I think they just realized that. I don't know. And then basically, yeah, Donnie says, I just like smashing stuff. Yeah. (laughs) And then, you know, I hate that old patio furniture. It's history! (laughs) And they just run off to destroy that, and the rest. Eileen's gonna come back from DC and be like, "What is this?" Yeah, I forgot to mention that he says, "Your mom's in DC. Why don't we do the project?" It's like together? the only time they just they actually explain why someone's not there. Actually showing or alluding to Eileen doing her job yeah. as a state senator. Yeah. So then it cuts back to Lewis and he's having like, he's like talking down to the dogs. I kind of like, like his this. delivery here though, where he's just like, I like this too. No, we're not going to have another outburst like we just had. <laughs> Look at this mess. <laughs> uh, but I love the way they got the dogs to act. Yeah. They're like, ooh, like they're all sad. Covering his eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And then it just suddenly cuts to all the owners coming to pick up the dogs and it has the music, the and so all the owners come to pick up their dogs, and they're every stereotype person in the book walking through the door. Yeah, it's just so funny. So like, you just have like a regular lady like dressed like she's coming from work. Then you have a punk, like a guy just a yep, punk. punk rocker. Yep. Then you have a hippie come walking in the door. Yeah, I, like wish, I wish it was Jeff again. I know, right? <laughs> oh my god, just the token hippie in yeah. every episode. I mean, good. Oh my god. And so this woman who's a hippie, she comes walking in. Then a freaking construction worker with the hat still on, wearing it like a fashion statement, you know? Yeah. In case you didn't know, this was a construction worker. <laughs> He's not going to take the hat off. It's like, a, <laughs> it's like a firefighter showing up in his with his hat on and stuff. Exactly. It's like... Full uniform. It's just so funny. And the way he comes walking in, like, smiling, like, all excited. And this is also kind of like a montage, too. Like, it's another... Oh, yeah. It's a montage, montage of people coming to There's pick up so the dogs. There's so many montages in this episode. Lewis thinks that all the dogs have been picked up, and he he's collected all of his money. And, yeah, that one dog is named Thor, which is interesting mm. <laughs> uh, reference. And so then, you know, he thinks everything's great. He made his money. And then suddenly Miss Walters, Mrs. Poopsie Lady, shows up at the door again. I love the way he's like, what? And then I'm here to pick up my little Poopsie. 
And he invites Miss Walters in to sit in his waiting room. And then, you know, I'm a very, I'm very busy or whatever. And then, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just touching his face all weird. And so she sits down. I love how judgmental she is. Like, she is just taking in this entire house. Yeah. Like, she, she sits down, like, puts her hands on her thigh. And she's just like, mm, just looking around. <laughs> Lewis goes running to Ren for help, and he's like, look, I can't find Poopsie. Like, I need your help to find him. Lewis does another really great line where he puts on the fake cry, and he says... Ren, you're right. I'm, I'm never going to amount to anything. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be in a circus as known as, as a boy who can't do anything. Step right up. Just, just don't expect much. Step, Step right, right up. up. Just... Don't expect much. <laughs> That's good. And then she's I love like, that well, one. you can tell Ren's like feels bad. She's like, ah, okay, you did do a good job. Besides this, like, yeah, she said besides earlier this. she was proud of him for you know she yeah. he did what he set his mind to and he actually accomplished it. And so she goes running off in another montage, searching for Poopsie all around the house and everywhere she looks she sees that sub it's like the same exact sub but it's just like he either just gets the same sub all the time and never finishes it and, and he leaves it everywhere yeah, he's forgetting it or it's just a joke of like the same sub just like moving around in the house I like you though. <laughs> having a mind of its own under the bed it's in like the cabinet yep it's under the bed it's and then it's on Ren's bed yep it's yeah, just randomly on Ren's bed and Poopsie's eating it are those the only three places? Uh, I think there's one more, maybe. Oh, I'm just thinking about him eating it. Yeah. Because it's interspersed with Lewis trying to entertain Mrs. Walters. Yeah, yeah. Um, and interesting, they show him juggling. Oh, I didn't even connect that. Yep. Whoa, that's funny. Because as if you've seen Honey Boy, yeah. Yep. They show Lewis juggling to entertain Miss Walters, and that was like a focal point in Honey Boy, something that... They showed him doing as a kid with the father, and then when he was older in rehab. Yeah, they bonded over it. It was like a therapy. It was kind of therapeutic, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Later Mm -hmm. on. So that was just interesting. I was like, oh my God, there it was. They utilized that. That's funny. I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, ever since I saw Honey Boy now, like, anything is just sticking out like a sore thumb to me. You saw it twice, too, right? Yeah. Honey Boy, yeah. I only saw it once. I need to see it again. Um, and it's also interesting during this montage, it's like a different version of the theme song that's playing. It's kind of cool. I never noticed that it's literally the theme song. Yeah, I gotta listen to it again. So yeah, so Ren finds Poopsie on her bed. Everything's fine. Lewis is about to tell the truth uh, and tell Mrs. Walters, you know, uh, Poopsie is missing. It was also funny how he starts dancing with Mrs. Walters. That's whatever. Right, yeah. Left and right and left and right and blah, blah, blah. And do, do, do. I love that part. And she's like laughing and enjoying it. And then suddenly, oh, enough already. Where's my Poopsie? And then Poopsie is just like in plain sight. Like Ren's looking all in these ridiculous places. And then Poopsie's just in the middle of the bed, just there. Yeah. So then it's just, oh yeah, did you miss mommy? Mommy missed you. Oh, and then yeah. The Poopsie saga is, and is complete. <laughs> <laughs> the Poopsie Saga. Oh my gosh. I love Poopsie. Yeah, I love Poopsie. I'm gonna if I ever have a dog, I'm gonna name it Poopsie. I mean what like what kind of a name is that? Only if it's a boy though. I'm gonna name him Poopsie. I know. And give it a pink ribbon. Yes. Me and my mom do impressions of this lady constantly. Yeah, she's great. My little poopsie. Yeah, every time we talk about our dog, we go like, my little poopsie. All these weird inflections. That's funny. Yeah, so that's basically the end of the episode. And then Lewis is counting up all his money and he realizes, oh yeah, I worked hard for this money. You think I'm just going to blow it on something stupid? Uh, no. Cut to his bedroom. He bought a churro machine instead of a sludgy machine. Okay, I love churros. Maybe my favorite food ever. But... This was a wrong choice. Yes. Because first of all, it's just it doesn't it even doesn't make, make the churros. It. it just holds the churros. Exactly. So, like the slushy machine actually like it keeps it, you know, a churning. Yeah, cold and yeah. And cold, yeah. yeah. Like that was the wrong choice, I think. Yep, it was. It never makes any sense to me because, yeah, it's, it just keeps them hot. It just yes. holds them and keeps them hot. It doesn't make it doesn't them. So make them. who's making the churros? You still got to make the churros. Yeah. Always bothers me. Always bothered me too. And of course, now he's wearing a shirt that says, I heart churros. Yeah. Now churros own his heart. Forget the dogs. Forget yeah. dad. It's churros. We need that yep. shirt on the red bubble. I heart churros. I heart churros. I'm sure oh my god, you're right! I'm sure it'd be super easy. Thank you. I gotta write that down. You can do I love, that. you can do all three of them. 
a trilogy. Like in a row, I heart dad, I heart dogs, I heart churros. Yes. I heart dad, dogs, and churros. <laughs> Recreating things. It's so fun. And so Ren comes in to his room and she's like, Lewis, like a churro is just deep fried dough dipped in sugar, which sounds amazing. And he says that. So he says, and uh, the problem is, uh, and she, then she just sits down with him and he gives her a churro. They say cheers. And that's re- basically the end of the episode again. Yeah. Then there's another end end to the episode, the final minute bit, which is pretty pointless. I This might be the worst. This might be the worst. This one. goes nowhere. And it's just so it's, awkward. It's just probably my, I almost, I forgot about it. I was like, I was thinking it was the churro thing. Yeah. And then I was like, wait, there's something else? I was like, what is it? And I've seen this episode a million times. Like, it should have been the churro yeah, thing. It's so, this is the worst one, in my opinion. No, but yeah, honestly. So, it's literally just footage of Donnie watching, we don't even know what. It could be literally anything. Probably football. I was assuming they were going to show us that it was like a football game, yeah. but they never show us. Yeah. He's just screaming and shouting at, it, it might not even be the TV. There's, Who knows? There's no... <laughs> There's no punchline. He's just screaming and shouting. I wish they should have made it like like the Kennel Club dog show or something. Like They did that on Lizzie McGuire, yeah. Oh, did they? Okay. Yeah. Like the father's like, oh that. my God. It, it makes it, it sounds like he's watching um, like Miss America or something like that. Okay. He's just like, oh my God, she's beautiful. Why didn't, what, what, they're so stupid. And then they cut to it and it's a dog show. <laughs> he's funny. like, oh my God, the golden retriever was the best, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I always remembered that. That's funny. But yeah, you know, so they never show us what Donnie's even watching, and they're doing those weird flashes and the yeah. strange camera movement. It's like anxiety riddled. Ren's just like, Donnie, like, keep it down. Dad's on a really important case. And then it's just Steve hopping on Mr. Hoppy that he found in the basement, just saying, oh, we'll take it all the way to the Supreme Court, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, this is really uncomfortable yeah. like like i watched it and i was like this is not a good ending this is just it's not a good mess. it's really not good they, it was a time filler for sure oh definitely which they should have just had another montage then in that case or the, yeah they should have done something so that the churro was the final minute bit. yeah you know yeah because it should have ended with lewis and red cheers yeah ban it end of the episode yeah anyway so that's it so mvp i said quite i said four people i said steve donnie poopsie and mrs walters yeah i uh i like mrs walters i'd probably say uh princess <laughs> yeah right i do like ren in this though actually i like i think she has some good lines yeah and i like how she kind of she helps lewis and they're not at each other's throats which is nice mm. hey i just realized mrs walters is a one-off character oh yeah that's true Princess is a one-off character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Poopsie. Princess kicked the whole thing in motion. Yeah. Lewis is so good in this episode. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's always great, you know? I mean, yeah, I know, but this one, I feel like all the comedy just stems from his little quirks, you know? Yeah. And most episodes are like that, but I mean, this one, there weren't a lot of... There were a couple one-liners, but most of them are just like him being Lewis. Yeah, like the crazy for canines. Yeah. One-liner. Yeah. <laughs> So do you have any trivia? Is it true? Did you know? That For your information, is it true that... What does that mean? I just had that Jonathan Winfrey was Oprah's son. And is he really? No. I was going to say. Because <laughs> like you said it I, at the beginning, you, it was like a joke. And then you just said it again, like mad serious. I was like, oh my God, wait. Uh, that's funny. No, um, the director, Jonathan Winfrey, though, he did... Uh, he directed a, an episode, a, cu- a couple episodes of Cousin Skeeter, which I love. Well, no, there wasn't really a lot of stuff for this one. Do you have anything? Mainly just some pop culture stuff. Basically, the Mrs. Walters is Sonia Edie or Eddie, uh-huh. uh, and she's in so many things. Girl Meets World. Yep, and like we've already said, she was the photographer in the Lizzie yeah. McGuire Picture Day episode, which I thought was just like the most fun connection. Yeah. Just pop culture stuff. Um, that one classical song they play when Steve and Donnie are destroying the birdhouse. Yeah. What song is that? Uh, I don't, don't know the no, name. I know Hold on. Um, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it's the... It's the uh, Didn't they used to play that when like fireworks would go off? Yeah, it's... Anyway. We'll find it later. It's not that important. Y'all know the song. So then, the adventures of Milo and Otis, the dogs playing poker thing, I wrote down six flags. <laughs> Never Neverland. Yep. Oh yeah, right. Never Neverland. Yep. Peter Pan. And then I put like slushy and slurpy and slush puppy and like all the other variations of mm-hmm. those things. So, it is time for... 
Tweets. There were so many. No I way. Was, yes. And you know why? And nothing for Luscious Lou? Why? Because of the churro machine. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's true. Everyone was talking about the That's darn- what you think about. I mean, even I forget sometimes it's even a sludgy. It's I always think it's the churro machine. Yeah. That he wants, but it's the slushy machine. Yep. So I'll go down some of these. Lauren says, the first DVD I got was Milo and Otis. I got it because Lewis made it sound interesting on Even Stevens. <laughs> you ever seen that movie? I, I've probably seen part of I it. I think I've seen it way long ago. Like, he didn't make it sound that interesting. He just said it's about a dog and a cat who become friends for life. Woo, I gotta have it. So interesting. I have it on VHS, though. Another... Remember in Even Stevens when he dog sat as a job? Best episode ever. Well, wouldn't go that far, honey. Yes, it's my number one. Travis also says, remember that Even Stevens episode where Lewis, L-E-W-I-S, ran a dog sitting business? Ha ha ha, probably my favorite. <laughs> I hate when people say probably. That's so like 2002. Classy Cassie says, every time I eat a churro, I think about when Ren on Even Steven says, it's just deep fried dough dipped in sugar. So bomb. Hashtag fat tweet. <laughs> Hashtag fat tweet. <laughs> Hashtag beans. Hashtag just throw it in beans. there. He was my MVP for this episode. Ricky Dillon, who's actually like a pretty big YouTuber oh, these really? days, I guess. That's a total YouTuber name, by the way. Yeah, he has like 3 million followers. Back years ago, he said... I seriously need to invest in a churro machine for my room like Lewis did on Even Stevens. Then someone whose user, like, display name is Lars Honey Toast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, another person, I don't, I don't, I think this is a different person than okay. another person we saw before, says, remember that episode of Even Stevens where Lewis got a churro machine in his bedroom? I blame that episode for my high expectations in life. And then the first time I heard of a churro was on Even Stevens, same. Really? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Oh, you live in Boston now, though. Yeah, I don't know if it's a Boston thing. I've, like, never heard of them. Yeah, there's churros all over the place in California. Does Costco sell churros out there? Maybe. At Bad Optics says, Shia LaBeouf in that episode of Even Stevens where he gets a churro machine in his room is the reason I am the person I am today. (laughs) Another person, Judy, said that the churro machine thing was probably the greatest thing she's ever witnessed to this day. What? I don't know what you mean. Another kid, Dave, says, as a kid, my favorite TV episode is when Lewis Stevens uh, found... The, oh, this is interesting. This is a bit of an amalgamation, this one again. Oh, love these. So Dave says, as a kid, my favorite TV episode was even Stevens when Lewis found gold to buy an icy machine, but then got a churro machine. All my life goals. <laughs> this is great. He found the gold, the gold sausage. Yep. And this is another great one from Hannah, very similar to one of the tweets we read in Easy Way. It says, currently reenacting the episode of Even Stevens where Lewis stays in bed all... Oh, oh, wait, this is another amalgamation. They messed it up. Let's do it. Currently reenacting the episode of Even Stevens where Lewis stays in bed all week to win a churro machine, minus the churro machine. So now another person, Brandon, whose profile picture is Beans says, show me a person who didn't want a churro machine in their room after that one Even Stevens episode, and I'll show you a liar. Still not a machine, but okay. I know. For You know for influenza, we're going to have to have like a whole episode just for tweets, right? Oh my God, I know. Ridiculous. You're going to have to like filter through them. Mm-hmm. Because there's going to be there's gonna be hundreds, like thousands. Another person just says the churros bit in Even Stevens was gold. He had it right next to his bed. Ugh, classic. I still want one. I did really want that in my room, though, the churro soldier. Yeah. And other people just saying like they can't even eat a churro or look at one without thinking of even Stevens. Um, wow. That ch- the churro is getting a lot of love for it being in it for all of 30 seconds. Seriously. Crazy. And then the last one from Jace, you might be cool, but you'll never be even Stevens churro machine next to your bed. Cool. Hashtag daily reminder. That might be my favorite one. Actually. I like that one. With the gif of Lewis reaching for it. That's a good tweet. And this was actually, wait, this is a good one. Wait, two more. Before the launch of Disney Plus, someone tweeted, Even Stevens will be on Disney Plus at launch. So whatever is going on in the world that is foul and offensive, know that goodness and righteousness is just around the corner. November 12th will be akin to having your own churro machine in your house. <laughs> and they put the gif. 
And then another one, which I, this is hysterical. So this is kind of a fun one to end on too. I don't even know what these people are thinking of sometimes. So someone was responding to something and they said, it's like that episode of Even Stevens when Lewis wants a slushy machine in his room, but by the end gets a churro machine instead. And then a person writes back and said, also like the one where he reroutes the steam and makes a sauna in the bathroom and him and his bro are just chilling in it. Like Donnie makes the bathroom into a sauna. Yeah, deep chocolate. Yeah. But like him and his brother aren't chilling in it together. The whole episode was just, was just them chilling. It was amazing. And not only that, like the, the steam thing happens for, I mean, it's what makes the the chocolate, chocolate melt, melt yeah. but they really only show like Donnie in the bathroom for like a minute total maybe. Yeah. And yet this person's acting like that's the whole episode and then the person wrote back, <laughs> LOL, yeah, that's a great episode too. <laughs> it wasn't even like the the hook of the episode had nothing to do no. with the bathroom. <laughs> no. The way that the person writes back, yeah, that's a great one too as if they know exactly the episode when that's uh, like yes. not even. The sauna you know? episode famous for saunas. <laughs> So, someone on YouTube says, Even Stevens is the best movie I have ever watched. Congratulations, person. So, best quote. Between two for me, but you go first. My first one. I really don't know, actually. I think my first one's a tie between what's with the vacancy sign, Dad, birds can't read, and please call me Lewis. That's a good one, too. It'll be better. And then I also, my honorable mentions are the I'm not hovering, I'm overseeing at a close distance. Mm-hmm. And step right up, just don't expect much. <laughs> <laughs> the boy who can't do anything. My favorite one is I'm just not one of those job people you hear so much about. Yep. That's probably my number one. That one stood out to me this time, too. I dare you to say that's not the best. Uh, what do you say? That is not the best slushie that's I've not- ever eaten. <laughs> not that one. I thought of that though. No, too. I know. I'm just, I'm I just making a joke. I know. I thought of that too when she when he said that. I was like, oh, that's the worst line delivery. <laughs> E-N. That sounds like a baby trying to say your name. E-N. <laughs> E-N. Anyway, so that's just about everything. So thank you guys so much for listening. Follow us on all the socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, evenstevensrank.com. Don't forget, check out some of our stuff on Redbubble. I put up a lot of new fun designs um, that I'm really proud of. So you should go and check those out. Leave us a voicemail or send us a voice memo, voice recording via email or call the number in the description, whichever works for you. Yeah. So that's about it. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. See you.